Hello and welcome to section 10.3. We're going to be working with a couple of new themes today involving chords and art. Here are the answers for 10.2. Alright, here we go. If you have any questions on that, let me know. So, as I mentioned, we're just going to be working with chords and arts in the circle. First theorem. It says that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So if the, if the two chords are congruent, then the two arcs are congruent and vice versa. So use the diagram of circle D. Uh, the measure of AB, arc AB is 110 degrees. So the first thing that I notice here is that these two arcs are congruent, they're the same lengths. So BC also has to be 110. All right, and then scenario two, if the measure of AC is 150, then find the measure of AB. So if this is 150 here. Since these two arcs are the same, we're going to call them X and X. Um, then we can go 360, total sum 360 equals 150 plus 2X. And then solve that for X. So subtract the 150 divide by 2, so 105 will be AB. Alright, this is uh, a little more complicated than the other one. I have some chords here, and I've drawn three different scenarios. Uh, one of them, this third one here, is specific. What I did here is I drew it so that it is perpendicular. The two chords are perpendicular, and the first chord uh, bisects the other chord. If that happens, then that chord is going to be the diameter. So that's the first thing. If one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then that first chord, as I mentioned, this guy right here, will be the diameter. And then the second one is kind of like the converse of that. If a diameter, so if you know if it's, if you know you have a diameter of a circle and it's perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter is going to bisect the chord and its arc. So a lot of words there. It's a lot of jargon, I guess, a lot of lingo, uh, with big fancy circle words. So we're going to apply that here. Um, so what I notice here is I have a diameter, and the diameter is perpendicular to this chord, so that means it cuts the chord in half. So 7 and 7, so AC will be 14. And then the same thing here cuts the arc in half. So these two arcs are going to be equal to each other, because it's the diameter and it's perpendicular to a chord. So we can solve for x, and x equals 8. So we're going to find all the arcs here. So this one, 8 times 9 is 72. This one will be 72. Since this is a semicircle, this one will be 108. And similarly, this one will be 108. So you can find all the arc measurements there uh, by using the property of the semicircle. And in this last theorem here, in the same circle or congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So what you got going on here is if EF is the same length as EG, then the two chords are going to be congruent. And you're going to see those right angle marks there. And the reason for that is that we're talking about equidistance. We're talking about distance. Um, and so whenever we're doing distance, we're always you know, measuring perpendicularly. All right, so in example four, so we're, this is example four. Suppose that ST is 32. So that's 32. And CU and CV are both 12. So 12 and 12. So these are the same. So that means that the two chords are going to be congruent because they're equidistant from the center. So QR then is going to be 32 because these two chords are congruent. QU is going to be half of that, 16. And then the radius of circle C. So here what you're going to do when you're finding the radius, you can draw this segment to here. And what you're going to do is create a right triangle. So with, within this right triangle here, what we have is 16 and 12. And then we call this R. So we can do 12 squared plus 16 squared equals r squared, and then just solve that for r, that's going to give you the radius. So you're, you're going to strategically draw the radius there. And then I was going to go back to this other page here. This is kind of a neat page. It says, uh, the three bushes are arranged in garden as shown. Uh, where should you place a sprinkler so that 
it is the same distance from each of the bushes. So what you'd want to do here is you basically is, is saying find the center. So to do that, what we can do is we can find two different diameters. To do that, so find two diameters. And the diameters are going to cross at the center because the diameters always go through the center. So to find a diameter, what we could do is place a point there and there. And then what we could do is we could find the perpendicular bisector of that segment there. And then what we could do is place a point here and here and find the perpendicular bisector of that segment. That should be the center. We'll see how, how well I did with that, if I, how accurate it was. I create a circle. And I'm pretty close, you know, not, not too far off, um, just with uh, some quick sketches. But if you did this precisely, very accurately, that's, that's what you can do. So there's a little bit of application to this. If you have three points, and you want to find um, the point that's equidistant to those, this would, this would work. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, hopefully uh, you can practice those statements in class. If you have any questions on them, let me know, and I can uh, go over them with you.